you make a list of hypotheses. This is obviously not, you know, not the natural phenomenon. And uh, the extraterrestrial explanation seemed to be the best one. Why shouldn't we? We know that there, there's got to be life throughout the universe. So why shouldn't it be able to come here, especially since there must be civilizations there that are, you know, thousands, if not millions of years ahead of us? But then, as you as you get more and more data, you realize that's not what the witnesses are describing. <laughs> Many, what the witnesses are describing is something that in many cases comes out of nowhere, disappears into nowhere. There are cases of objects becoming transparent on the spot, mm -hmm. physical objects, material objects. And I have no, no question that the, you know, people have said, well, the valet doesn't believe uh, this is physical. Well, of course it is physical. It's material at some times, but it can also change shape. It can also merge with other objects, and it can also disappear on the spot. Well, if it does that, uh, then it could be from anywhere, anytime. We always try to, you know, to discredit the old legends trying to say, no, these people were crazy, they thought everything was possible. But now we have the videos, and that's the big difference. Could you believe there are videos now of probably angels in the sky? And then I started looking at, at some of the things that didn't fit. And one of the things that you know, I had to ask is, when did this actually start? Uh, every UFO book starts with, you know, on June 24, 1947, Kenneth Arnold saw something about mm -hmm. the Ukrainian and so on. Well, that's not really true. I mean, you, we have data from the 30s and the 20s and, and from uh, 1896 and 1897 all over the United States, and then you can go back in, in history. And many people don't want to hear that. They want to hear that this is... Uh, you know, if you follow the first level extraterrestrial theory, then ETs, uh, you know, discovered us uh, when the atom bomb went off and they came here to study us. Well, that's not what the data says. So when did it start? And I found, uh, as I found an, an enormous wealth of data going back to medieval times and, and even before. Of course, as you go back in history, you lose the the cultural context, and it's harder to, to, to understand the data, but in medieval times, there were records, especially the records of the church, that were kept very, very carefully uh, about strange phenomena. You know, the, the, the skeptics are always saying, well, give us your best case and we'll take it apart. There is no such thing as one best case in, in any field. You, you have to look at an accumulation of cases and look for patterns, and, and then that's how the phenomenon reveals itself to you. And for a long period of time, or for a period of time, I believed it was extraterrestrial. I now believe it is interdimensional, uh, the phenomenon. In other words, we're looking at so-called spirit beings from another dimension. And uh, I back this up in the new book by equating it to ancient manuscripts where these beings manifested uh, to, to human beings and what their reactions were, and then comparing it to reactions present day of people who have had encounters, and the similarities are striking. Mm -hmm. well, first of all, you say to yourself, why would, why would, let's say, anyone deliberately crash saucers in Roswell, New Mexico, and then allow the bodies to be retrieved? What are these bodies, in fact? And this, it took me a long time to figure this out. And this is a theory, okay? There's a difference between the grays, the little guys, right, that we see that have now been enculturated with the big black right. slanted eyes that are about four feet tall, all right? Those, mm -hmm. Let's just call them the grays because pretty much everyone knows them as grays. But there's another creature which, which people and, and um, abductees talk about that they see on board the ships, and these are tall beings, and they, they assume different forms. Sometimes they can appear as reptilian, other times they can appear as insectoid, other times they can appear as Nordic. In other words, in my opinion, they're shapeshifters. Now, why would I say that? What backs it up? 
there's a scripture once again from our from our spiritual handbook which says that basically fallen angels can appear as angels of light if they so choose okay okay they can appear as angels of light if they so choose that's a shapeshifter but it shapeshifts it can appear as whatever it wants to I believe that many of us were shown these documents over the years so that later we would talk about it. I mean, how can you keep the existence of extraterrestrials, if they were real, a secret? And how could anyone keep quiet knowing that they had seen documentation, official government documents, labeled top secret, that expressed that these extraterrestrials were real and had visited this Earth? I wanted to know just how true all of this was, and I began a program of research to find out if extraterrestrials were real. What I discovered was amazing. What I discovered, ladies and gentlemen, is that there has been a plan in existence to create an artificial extraterrestrial threat to this Earth in order to create a one-world totalitarian socialist government. All the bombardment of the public with movies about flying saucers in the 50s right after the United Nations Treaty was signed and the UN Participation Act was pushed through Congress and all of the incidents since that have convinced the majority of the American people that flying saucers are real and extraterrestrials exist and that flying saucers are from an extraterrestrial origin. This is being promulgated in many ways, by television commercials, in the movies, in the newspapers, by creating incidents either real or imagined. I mean, how can a nuts and bolts spacecraft, you know, two objects that are supposed to be made of metallic steel, fly into each other at thousands of kilometers an hour, become one object and then fly off in another direction? He says the UFOs do not seem to exist as tangible manufactured objects. They do not conform to the natural laws of our environment. They seem to be nothing more than transmogrifications tailoring themselves to our abilities to understand. The thousands of contacts with the entities indicate that they are liars and put-on artists. The UFO manifestations seem to be, by and large, merely minor variations of the old age demonological phenomenon. Again, the researchers will show you that the messages being received are deceptive in nature. They will tell you things like, well, you know, we've come from Venus or Mars in the 60s. That was the messages. Well, we now know that's impossible. Now they say they come from Sirius or Orion or Zeta Reticuli or somewhere far off where we can't test those claims. And that's the problem. And some of the stories they've told us like that we know to be demonstrably not true. And if someone comes to you, Chris, and tells you a story and does all these things and says, I'm here to help you, but then does brutal things to you and then lies to you, then I don't think trust is a, is a good place to start. There is no evidence I wish to emphasize that these life forms from elsewhere are hostile towards us. way to 
implement a plan to bring about a one-world government than to create, create the possibility in the minds of the people of the world that we are being threatened from some other species, from some other planet, and do it in a way that if anybody questions it or challenged it or wants to talk about it publicly, that they are ridiculed. My mind balked at the idea of believing that maybe all of my friends and all the bloods, innocent blood spilt by all my friends, and they had died at the hands, you know, and the altar of corporate greed by a cup, you know, by a bunch of occultists.